Ever since this pandemic started, and my life has been changing so much. I find myself unable to set goals and follow through with them. And this inability is perpetually making me so sad. I need to be able to do something if I can be happy. It begs the question, why do I even exist? Why exist on this world if I have no purpose? I need something, something to do. At least something that will get me through these next couple of days. What's something that I need, desperately? The one thing that I need above all else. Probably a low row, high row machine. Sounds pretty good. Welcome to this video where I show you how to make a lat pull down. This machine right here that you see on screen is a trolley driven lat pull down machine. That means it's got a trolley on the back that slides up and down the back upright using custom rollers that I create in this video. Here is a depiction of how the machine will work. You just put your weights onto those weight horns on the trolley on the back and connect it to the cable and you're off. You start using the lat pull down slash low row. So I begun by buying this 3 8 inch thick plate from my local scrap metal yard. I believe it was around four foot by three foot. So it was not that large of a plate. However, it did weigh around 165 pounds. I did the calculations. I cleaned the plate up with a wire brush and an angle grinder and prepared it to be put on the CNC plasma table. This lat pull down machine has a lot of flat parts that were definitely perfect to be cut out of the CNC plasma table, so this was the perfect tool for the job. It took a long time to do this cut because there were so many triangles to cut out of where the pulleys were going to be installed. It was an extremely tedious cut with so many intricate small little things to cut out, but I enjoyed watching it nonetheless. It's really enjoyable watching machines do work for you. Thank you. 
Here I'm cutting out the Solomon logo. I decided to put this logo on this machine because it's my first name, even though I don't go by it. So it's always kind of been something about me that a lot of people don't know about. So here you can see the Solomon lettering logo is embedded within the seat component of this lat pull-down machine, which gives it a really interesting, cool, professional sort of look in my opinion. This is my first time ever using the plasma table, so I didn't know that this was evidence of the plasma not piercing the plate all the way. Um, if I was a more experienced CNC plasma table user, I would have stopped right there, ran the G-code again, and, and the plasma would have been able to go all the way through, but I didn't know that that was indeed what was happening there. I knew something was wrong, but... I just didn't know. I thought I would be able to get that plate out, but turns out the plasma didn't go all the way through right there. And that one seat part became very difficult to get out. I had to use the angle grinder with a blade cutting disc on it, and it was a pain in the ass. The parts that I cut out on this first journey out to the CNC plasma table were the two upright parts which hold four pulleys and connect the two main uprights of the machine. The two seat parts which form the seat and have a quarter circle design. The double pulley figure eight style part which holds two pulleys and enables the machine to have a low row. and the trolley resting part, which goes around the back upright and allows the trolley to not go down too far. You can see here I did have a lot of trouble getting the second seat component out because the plasma didn't pierce like I was saying before. After you cut parts out with a CNC plasma table, there is always a lot of slag on the back end of the part that you have to knock off. You also just have to grind these parts to make them look nice. Here you can see all the parts that I made on this adventure out to the CNC plasma table. There was a lot of angle grinding to do on this machine. All my parts ended up being hand polished down and that was a labor of love. It took a long time, but I had to do it to make it look cool. I had to come up with a way to make the rollers for the trolley for this machine because I absolutely could not find anything that would work on the internet. So I had to figure out a way to make them. And I really struggled with not having the right tools when I was making this machine. For example, to make these rollers I needed a lathe. Here you can see I converted the drill press into a sort of vertical lathe, but it was extremely sketchy and not ideal at all. I do end up making a part that is kinda gonna work. I think it's gonna work.
And then what I do end up doing with this wood part is I is I make a silicone mold and I make a bunch of polyurethane copies of this wood part. So this wood part acts as the OG original part, but not actually one of the parts that I end up using on the machine. But here you can see the roller, it just has a uh, three inch little beveled section which wraps around the three inch square tubing and makes the trolley stay on track. I went back to cut out a couple more parts on the CNC plasma table. Some stuff that I didn't have designed when I was there before. I had to lay my plate back down on the exact same place that I had it before. And you can see I got really close to the edge and it was pretty lucky that I managed to fit all my parts back onto this plate. You can see this one got really close. This is what I call the license plate. It's the base plate for the front middle. I call it the license plate, the Solomon license plate. Got very close to that other part right there. This was a very thin, long piece of quarter inch thick steel that I got at the scrapyard. I believe it is nine inches wide and seven foot long. Uh, you can cut a lot of different stuff out of that though. It was only 30 bucks. You're going to have to clean up your parts that you cut out of a CNC plasma table because lots of times stuff like this happens and the plasma doesn't make it all the way through. Sometimes it can be pretty annoying. These parts were about halfway finished at this point. Ground down with the grinding disc. Hit them with the flap disc next going up and grit all the way up to 120. And then I will be hitting them with a nylon polishing disc. And that will be the final thing. So I gotta go over these surfaces a couple more times, probably four or five more times each. And it is going to take a long time. I then made a mold 
for my wooden part that I made on my vertical lathe. It was pretty interesting making this mold. I've never made anything out of silicone before. You want to start off with making the top part of the mold first. And to do that, you need to fill clay into the bottom part of your mold. I used some rocks that I found outside to create a little connector point that connects the top half of the mold to the bottom half in the exact same place every time. I got this silicone just on Amazon. You can find it. It'll be the first or second silicone you find on Amazon. Jesus. Oh. Did you see that? I saw that, yeah. I'm gonna go scoop cat poop. I then poured my polyurethane liquid solution into my mold and I got a part like this. The part needed some cleaning up to do, but it was definitely satisfactory for what I was looking for. And I did that four more times. Once more, just to be sure. The trolley only needs four rollers. I then drilled out the correct holes to hold bearings on either side and to get a half inch bolt through there. And it was pretty fun drilling through this plastic. It made so much white drill shavings. Just filled the garbage can up with them. I'm using a pretty standard chop saw with a large grinding disc to cut my metal. I'll upload my plans and you can get the dimensions for everything there, but I'm using 3x3, 3 3, 3 inch by 3 inch, 11 gauge steel sourced from the United States. The steel actually said that it was made November 2nd, 2020. 
and I like that. It's kind of interesting to know that the steel was actually made November 2nd, 2020. I then laid all my parts out in preparation for welding. I drilled holes on the bottom of the front upright on either side so that the cable that will be on the bottom pulley will be able to pass through the front upright. I then welded my machine. This is only my second or third time welding. I suppose it's my third time. So I'm still learning, so try not to judge my welds. Although I think I get some of them pretty gosh darn good. This is probably the best weld I've ever done in my entire life. There was a pretty wide gap there, probably like eighth inch to quarter inch gap. And I just managed to make it work. And I'm very proud of this weld. If there is ever a moment when you're welding and you question the way you have things set up, then you probably definitely should set it up a different way. Welding is a lot about how you lay your parts out before you actually even weld. And if you do that incorrectly, then your finished product is going to be totally effed up. So if you find yourself questioning how you have things laid out at all, I would recommend to just switch it up. It's not going to take that long and the finished product is going to be so much better for it. And I didn't do that here sometimes. Do what I say, not what I do.
This is the first look you get at my gussets. I have no footage of me cutting them out on the plasma table, but it's probably the most intricate part that's ever been cut out on a plasma table. And it took a long time, but they look so cool and I think it really levels up how cool my machine looks overall. Here you can get a first look of what my machine looked like right after I finished welding.
The next step was to grind some more. Finally, things were ready for painting. I'd ground the parts down to a point where I thought they were passable, and they looked pretty polished and ready to go. So the next step was to paint it a nice navy blue. After the blue was a coat of clear coat, and then it was mostly done. After painting, I took all the paper and the tape off, and the cable machine was almost done. This is what it looked like at that stage. Thank you. 
All that grinding was worth it. The only thing to do now was to set everything up. My lat pull-down machine has eight three and a half inch pulleys. This device enables the machine to have low row capabilities. It does this by intercepting the path of the main cable at the top and redirecting it down through the two pulleys at the bottom of the machine. I sewed this seat with my mom and it was a really good time hanging out with her. Without her, this seat would not have ended up looking as good as it does. I put some T-nuts into the wood to connect the seat to the brackets I welded onto the machine. Connecting the two halves of the trolley was easier said than done. The machine has two cables, one for the high row and one for the low row. The cables unite around the figure 8 shaped pulley bracket that hangs suspended in the middle of the machine. The cables need to be pulled tight and swaged at each end. This is where you tighten an aluminum sleeve around two sections of a cable, creating a loop at the end. Since the machine has two cables and four cable ends, four swages must be applied. However, if you want your lat pull-down bar to hang a couple inches lower than the top pulley, then you'll have to add another swage on the top cable. The two rubber balls at the front, top, and bottom pulleys are vital for making this machine function. Without them, the cable would slip out the second you began pulling. You simply slide them onto the cable and follow them with a washer and then the aluminum sleeve. Here you can see me using a swage tool. There are a variety of different swaging tools, so you don't necessarily have to use one like this. And bam, just like that, without a single F word screamed, all five cable swages were swaged and the machine was complete.
the only problem is, I think obviously, the trolley and the rollers. Clearly, my polyurethane rollers don't exactly fit perfectly, and I'm gonna have to try something else. So my next video is going to be about aluminum rollers that I make on a metal lathe. Stay tuned for that. Thank you everybody for watching this video. I really appreciate your support. If you can leave a like or a comment or even subscribe to the channel Lavish Moss, uh, that would be really amazing. That section at the beginning of the video, I mean, it's a joke, but... You know what I mean? It's been hard. So leave that like. Thank you.